One of the most common topics that I discuss on my YouTube channel is tiling window managers. I have made a bunch of videos on various tiling window managers over the last couple of years. And as the channel gains in popularity and I get more and more new subscribers, a lot of you guys, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't watched a lot of my older videos, you're asking me questions that I may or may not have answered on videos in the past, but you know, I'm getting a lot of the same questions regarding specific tiling window managers or just tiling window managers in general, like on a daily basis. So instead of having to answer a lot of those questions individually, I thought today I would make a quick video answering some of the common questions and comments that I get about tiling window managers. So let's start with maybe the most common question I get on the channel. Hey DT, what window manager are you using right now? Well, <laughs> why are you asking me that question? And the reason I say that is it's you guys are asking me this. Many of you are asking me this because it's like, Whatever window manager I happen to be using at this moment, you know, it's like my influence might actually influence you on the window manager you decide to use. That really shouldn't be the case. You know, you should not use a window manager based solely on what I happen to be using today. I, I really caution you guys on making a decision like that based solely on what I use or what some other YouTube personality uses. That's not the, the way to go about this thing. Also, you have to understand, I am a very weird kind of desktop user, desktop Linux user. I have nine or ten different window managers installed on my system right now. I have one floating window manager, OpenBox, installed on the system, and then I have DWM, Awesome, Qtile, i3, BSPWM, Erbsluft, Xmonad, I think StumpWM is also somewhere on the system. I've, I've got a bunch of window managers here on the system, and I log into most of them on a regular basis. Today, if I switch to my desktop, I am in Qtile. Qtile, Tiling Window Manager written in Python, one I used many times over the years, one I really like. Uh, yesterday, I made a video and I was in DWM when I made that video. Uh, the video before that, I think I recorded in Xmonad or Awesome. You know, it, it varies. You know, I'll log into different window managers every other day. So asking me what window manager I happen to be using now is kind of pointless because I never know what I'm going to be using and it doesn't really matter to me. They're all pretty much the same to me because I've got them all configured to do kind of the same thing. They all kind of use the same key bindings. And again, don't think that whatever I'm using is some is some way an endorsement for a window manager as far as that's the one for you guys to use. Don't think like that. Probably the second most common question I get is, hey DT, which tiling window manager is the best? All right, so <laughs> there is no best. There, there's no best anything. That's, that's a stupid question, and I'm not kidding at all. That is a stupid question. Anytime you ask, hey, what is the best something? And it's just a very broad, general question. What's the best movie? You know, what's the best car? What's the best this? What's the best? What's the best tiling window manager? I mean, we have to have more information to answer that. Besides, there's no just general best anything. Everyone has their own workflow, their own biases, their own experiences. Uh, there's no universal best anything. There just isn't. So that's just a, a ridiculous question. Quit asking me, hey, what's the best anything? I don't care what it was the best music player. What's the best video editor? Guys, you know, you got to work out some of this stuff on your own because it all comes down to, again, your own experiences and biases and personal choice. So now a more specific version of that question is, which tiling window manager is best for beginners or which tiling window manager is the easiest to get into? I get that question a lot and that one is a little bit of a better question to ask and it's one I typically do give an answer to. The one I typically recommend for beginners is the awesome window manager because the awesome window manager, you can actually use it straight out of the box. It's got a pretty decent configuration out of the box. It's got a panel that's already configured for you. It's got some widgets. You know, it's got a right click menu kind of similar to open box. You can actually log into awesome for the very first time and actually figure some stuff out and, you know, get your programs launched and actually get some work done right away. That's not the case in a lot of other tiling window managers, but that is the case with awesome. If 
you've tried awesome or you don't want to try awesome for some reason. You want some other tiling window manager recommendations as far as good first tiling window managers. I3 is pretty easy to get into and Qtile is pretty straightforward as well. Qtile is another one. It just kind of works out of the box for the most part. We need to talk about the ones to avoid though, because increasingly I'm getting questions from you guys. You know, I, I'm getting a lot of questions and comments here recently about DWM, especially because I've spent some time in DWM on camera here in the last month or so. And because I'm a big proponent of Xmonad, I'm getting a lot of people asking me about Xmonad as a first toddler. Those are not good first toddlers. Those are not the way to go. Do not think that you're just going to install DWM or Xmonad as a first tiling window manager and that's going to be a great experience because that's not. DWM and Xmonad are very minimal and they have steep learning curves and they have some quirks to them that may cause you a bit of grief if you are not properly prepared for them. Another question I've gotten recently is, hey DT, is a tiling window manager worth it, especially to a non-programmer? So you guys, a lot of you guys, I think have this misconception that tiling window managers are only used by programmers. And I'm not a programmer. I'm not a programmer by trade. I actually don't work with computers. I don't have a job that deals with Linux or computers at all. Uh, I'm just a regular guy, right? <laughs> so uh, yes, you don't have to be a programmer to use a tiling window manager at all. Really, tiling window managers are not that different from floating window managers as far as your typical desktop usage. Like if you're just a normal computer user, if you're an average computer user, typically all you open up is a web browser anyway. You open up a web browser and it's full screen on your desktop and you go to Facebook and Netflix and all that crap. You know, it's the same in a big desktop environment like GNOME or Plasma as it is in a tiling window manager. Exactly the same, if that's pretty much your workflow. Now where tiling window managers really shine is if you have a workflow that goes beyond just opening up your web browser and watching Hulu or whatever it is you do. Like if you uh, spend a lot of time in a terminal or you spend a lot of time in a text editor, you know, tiling window managers really make a lot of sense, especially if you have multiple windows open a lot. If you're the kind of person that you do some writing and you have a, a text editor taking up one half of your screen, but you need a web browser to do some search or, or, you know, whatever it is you research for whatever it is you're writing about and you want that on the other half of the screen. You know, having a tiling window manager is nice because you can manipulate the windows. You can bring one full screen when you need it. You can push one, you know, to hide it when you need it. You can rearrange them to divide the screen in half. You can move them so one is on the right instead of the left. You know, you know, tiling window managers add a lot of functionality that typically your floating window managers just will not have. Another common question I've been getting is what is the most customizable tiling window manager? Now this one is actually not that hard to answer because while I think pretty much all the tiling window managers that I have used are very, very customizable, extreme customization, there is one that really does stand out if you take the time to learn it and take the time to learn the programming language that it is configured in. And that is the awesome window manager. The awesome window manager offers extreme customization options. If you are willing to take the time to learn Lua, the awesome window manager, like the sky's the limit, anything you can imagine, you can turn the awesome window manager into. Uh, it's just something that's, you know, it can do things that are not possible in any other window manager. Another common question I get is, DT, I heard that Python is slow and sucky as a programming language. Why do you like Qtile? It must be slow, right? Uh, no. <laughs> Qtile is just as fast as any other tiling window manager I've ever used. Just as fast. If, let's open up some windows. Let's, you know, let's close some windows, you know. Let's uh, launch something and, if, well, if I can type right, let's launch something and move the windows and let's resize the windows and close the windows, right? It's the exact same speed that I get out of DWM, which is written in C, which is a very fast language. It's the exact same speed I get out of Xmonad, which is written in Haskell, which is a very fast language. Qtile is just as fast as those. But, but that can't be. It's written in slow and sucky Python because, you know, somebody else told me Python was slow. Python is slow. Python is slow for some tasks. 
But you guys, you have to think of what a tiling window manager is. And you know what a window manager is? In case you are confused at all, you see this blue border around this window? That blue border around that window is the window manager. That's all it is. That is basically the window manager. It determines where this window is placed on the screen as I drag it with the mouse or as I open a new window or as I close a window. The window manager is just that blue border that determines <laughs> where that window is placed on the screen. That's all it is. You know, it's not highly computational intensive work that Python is doing, right? This is not something that yeah, Python is perfectly suited to be a window manager. I think a lot of people think when they see you know, my desktop, you know, the Qtile desktop here, they think maybe everything here is Python. You know, the terminal emulator that I'm running is written in Python, or the programs I launch inside the terminal emulator must be Python. The whole operating system must be Python. No, we're just talking a window manager. It's just the border around the window that determines where that window is placed on the screen. That's all it is. Python is perfectly suited for that task. Another question is, does using a tiling window manager make a terminal multiplexer obsolete? Uh, I get this question on a regular basis as well. For the most part, yes. If you use a tiling window manager, you do not need a terminal multiplexer like Tmux or Screen. A tiling window manager kind of makes Tmux pointless, at least as far as a local machine, it, you know, Tmux is pointless if you're already using a tiler anyway. Why tile with Tmux? Your, your window manager already tiles, right? So yes, it does kind of make it obsolete. But on the flip side here, don't forget that, you know, most terminal multiplexers like Tmux, they work over SSH. They offer the ability to detach and reattach. So yes, you might have a use case for Tmux, even if you do use a tiling window manager, if you use Tmux for remote connections. So for me, I don't really have a need for it, so I don't use Tmux. But for some of you guys, if you need to do anything remotely, yeah, Tmux may have a use for you. The next question is, hey DT, I use i3 mainly for its tabbed layout because I can't live without the tabbed layout. Are there any other tiling window managers out there that have this kind of tabbed layout? Uh, no, but you don't really need it. I think a lot of you guys that have fallen in love with i3 and that tabbed layout think that that layout is something special, that it's something that it really isn't. The tabbed layout really is just like every other tiling window managers monocle layout or max layout or full screen layout depending on what they call it so if i uh, switch to the max layout and i open a window and i'll launch something i'll launch h top here you know this is full screen uh, and if i open up something else you know i can launch something else and i don't know i'm just going to run a ls so we've got something different on the screen you know, the full screen layout, the monocle layout, the max layout in your tiling window manager is essentially like i3's tabbed layout. And you're like, well, I don't have, I don't see any tabs. Yeah, there's no tabs, but you don't need the tabs. It's the same thing. The windows are all here. They're stacked on top of each other. You don't physically need to see a tab. And you can still cycle through with the Vim keys, in my case, Super J or Super K, to cycle through the stack, you know, to get through the windows. In this case, it's just two, but I could have you know, 15 windows open and cycle through the stack with, you know, super J and K. So the tabbed layout uh, is really no different than your monocle layout and most other tiling window managers other than i3 adds that wasted space because you have the bar that actually shows you the window names as tabs. That really is pointless and it kind of wastes screen real estate honestly in i3 so yes you you can live without the tabbed layout if you install something like awesome or qtel or whatever and yeah, just use the full screen layout it's the same yes you don't actually see the tabs but i mean are you launching windows and forgetting what windows you actually launched i doubt that's really the case now, some of you guys that haven't tried a tiling window manager yet, you know, a common thing I get is, hey, DT, all tiling window managers look the same. You know, I go to r slash Unix porn and look at these screenshots. They all look the same. What's the difference between all these window managers? Aren't they all basically the same? Well, you have a point. They all can do the same things. Absolutely. Because they're all very, very customizable. So you can make them actually do the same 
thing as this other window manager and that window manager can be made to do the same thing as this other window manager over here yes uh, so you, they can all basically do the same things but there are very real differences amongst the various tiling window managers one how they handle multi-monitors can vary uh, i3 handles multi-monitors very differently than xmonad workspaces uh it's another thing some tiling window managers take dwm for example have workspaces assigned to each monitor each monitor has its own set of workspaces xmonad has a completely different way to handle workspaces you have one group of workspaces they're shared amongst all the monitors the language that these window managers is written in is another thing the programming language and the configuration file because, for example, the awesome window manager is configured in Lua. The configuration file is a Lua script. If you don't know Lua, that may be tough. Python is the programming language for Qtile. So if you know a little Python, Qtile may be more appropriate. And the last question I'm going to discuss today is DT. Can I get a pre-configured tiling window manager? So a lot of you guys are really scared about getting a just plain vanilla tiling window manager, you know, and then you have to configure it. You have to open that config file and start hacking on it, and you're not really sure what to do. Hey, can I get a pre-configured tiling window manager? Absolutely. So if you want, you can actually get some Linux distributions that come with pre-configured tiling window managers out of the box. Arco Linux has a ton of various additions that come with pre-configured tiling window managers. Arco makes a pre-configured i3, BSPWM, Awesome, Qtile, Xmonad, and probably a few more that escape my mind right now. Manjaro offers a really nice pre-configured i3 edition. They also offer a pre-configured Awesome window manager edition. The other thing you can do is just pull down other people's configs. Most people that run tiling window managers push their configs to a GitHub or a GitLab repository. It just makes it easier. You know, when you have to reinstall your operating system, you just pull your configs down from, in my case, GitLab, and everything's the same. So I push all my configs to my GitLab. So, and that's what I suggest you guys do. Just go to my GitLab page. If you're unsure what to do with something like Qtile, go grab my Qtile config or my awesome config or my Xmonad config. Try it out for yourself. You guys, if you want to try out DWM, try my build of DWM. It's also on my GitLab. If you're on an Arch-based system, just look for a package DWM-DistroTube-Git. You can install it from the AUR. But really, you, you shouldn't use any of these pre-configured tiling window managers. I mean, it's okay to use them as a guideline. You, if you use my configs or the Arco configs or the Manjaro configs or you find somebody's configs on GitHub, I mean, it's kind of cool. They can provide inspiration, but really just use that as a guideline. You know, find out what works for you. Find out what doesn't work for you. Take what you want, throw away the rest, but eventually what you really need to do, you got to customize your own config to suit your needs. That's the whole point of running a tiling window manager. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few people. This episode was produced by Michael Mitchell, Chris DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George Haplow, Nate, Lambda, LibreQuest, Omri, Rob, Sean, Willie, these guys. They are the producers of the show, my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. The show is also brought to you by all of these ladies and gentlemen. Each and every one of my supporters over on Patreon, a sincere thank you to each and every one of those ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like to support the channel, consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.